Hello again. Welcome to Little Orphan Annie and the Million Dollar Formula. Today we'll be reading Chapter 7. Survival of the Fighting Guest. Apparently, Impressed by the impregnable guard which Daddy Warbucks had established about the plant grounds, J. Gordon Slug appeared the following day and in a conference with Daddy, attempted to buy him off with an offer of one hundred million dollars for the secret formula. At Daddy's quiet refusal of the offer, Slug blew up in the air, shrieked curses, and was reaching for his gun. When Daddy drew his and ordered him out, he finally left, shouting threats and cursing as he left. He'll never get that secret from me, Daddy declared empathetically. As he was discussing the incident with Annie and Eli. He's unscrupulous and dangerous, but his kind can't frighten honest men. He wants war over this thing. That's plain. Okay, I'll give him all the war he wants. Annie thought about it all and the next day approached Daddy with a problem that had arisen in her mind. There are laws for everything nowadays. The secret belongs to you and Eli. Slug hasn't any right to try to muscle in. Isn't there some law that'll keep him from stealing your secret? Yes, Annie, returned Daddy, laying aside the blueprints he had been studying. One of the world's oldest laws it's called the survival of the fittest. Some call it the survival of the fighting guest. This secret is too big for any ordinary law. The possessor of this secret can control the world. Slug proposes to take it. I propose to keep it. In short, Annie, in the fight that's coming, I intend to be the fightingest fellow in the world. But Daddy, it all sounds fishy to me. How can any one secret control the world? That will be clear enough to all very soon, Annie. Now run along. Daddy's pretty busy today. He was still musing as she left. Control the world. That's a lot of power. Too much for one man to attempt. Perhaps the happiness and welfare of peoples of all nations. I don't want such power, far from it. But in the hands of a man like Slug, it would be used to wreck civilization. It's my duty to see that this thing never falls into his hands. I hope I'm strong enough. I must be. Slug, maddened at his failure to buy off Daddy, was doing some thinking of his own. Refuse my offer to buy him out, will he? Wonder if he knows he's signed his death warrant. This is no time for soft tactics. Summoning two of his henchmen, he proceeded to give orders. Listen. Tomorrow, Warbucks is granting an interview to the press. There'll be a hundred or so reporters. 
You be reporters, see? Get in and grab old Leon and bring him here alive. Okay, boss. That's a smart dodge, remarked the first man as they left. We'll get to Eon before any of them get wise. Sure, and with old Eon in front of us, nobody dare shoot for fear of cooling him. It's perfect. Their ruse worked perfectly the following day. When Daddy had finished talking to the crowd of newspaper men that had gathered, the two found it easy, too, to slip away and make their way unobserved to the little laboratory. But they counted without Sandy. Always alert, the dog sensed something wrong in the, in the sneaking attitude of the two as they peered in at, at Eli's window. Always alert, the dog sensed something wrong in the sneaking attitude of the two as they peered in Eli's window. Guards sprang up from everywhere. In a twinkling, one of the men was pinned against the wall of the shack with a gun. A guard had grabbed the other by the scruff and planted a pistol in the pit of his back. Nix, nix, don't shoot. Look out, we're reporters. Reporters, eh? Snapped Daddy, as he, Eli, and Annie joined the group. Wise guys hid out in the plant to do a little snooping, did you? Lucky you didn't get a bad dose of lead poisoning. All right, boys, throw them out. Happy that their true identity hadn't been suspected, but worried at the prospect of facing Slug empty-handed, the two made their way out in a big hurry. Before they reached town, they had decided to hop a freight car and put a safe distance between them and the impending war between Slug and Warbucks. Guessing what had happened to his two men, Slug summoned his staff of bullies and gangsters. We have 50 of the toughest gorillas in the country and the most modern weapons. This time, there'll be no slips. Tomorrow, we move to that farm, just a mile from the plant. We'll lie low there, and when the right minute comes, we'll strike. Alone again, he twirled the big globe on his desk, gloating, rough. Rough? Lawless? Ha! Who cares? I'll have Eon, and I'll have that formula. Then let the sniveling public whimper about justice. Why, the nations of the world will have to dance to my tune. Join me again next time for Chapter 8. Slug Attacks. Thank you for watching.